Hey, this is Mike with Riding in the Ozarks, and I just listened to Harley Davidson's Q3 business update report this morning so that you don't have to. Well, let's get into it. So the business update goes over things like the number of units sold for quarter three versus prior year, the revenue and income for quarter three versus prior year in different segments of their business. It also gets into their business plan which includes the rewire initiative, which is what their plan is for the company through the remainder of 2020. It also gets into the hardwire plan, which is their five-year strategic plan for the company for the years 2021 through 2025. I'm gonna touch on some of the stuff that I think is important from the call. And I really wanna get into one thing I took away from the call that I think affects all current Harley-Davidson customers and potentially future customers doesn't matter if you're planning to buy, sell, or just have one currently. I think it's important when you look at this slide for the five-year strategic plan to remember, it's designed for investors and stakeholders, not for customers. The wording right here in the beginning of the slide says, Harley Davidson is the most desirable motorcycle brand in the world, end quote. Now, they're focused on desirability. They're not talking about making the best machine for the value to make that more desirable. Nothing's that specific in this strategic plan, um, but they're talking about parts and accessories, general merchandise, how they're gonna streamline operations and the workplace environment. It's a, a much bigger, big picture type plan. Let's move on and get into the rewire. That's the current initiative for the rest of 2020. So this slide here, talks about the key elements of the rewire. The first thing listed is about the new operational model. And then the next bullet point talks about refreshed leadership structure with new capabilities and fresh perspectives. Well, that doesn't sound very good for the old dogs in upper management. And as a matter of fact, they filled the CFO position last month that had been vacant since July. They brought in Gina Goeter who was a top finance executive at Tyson Foods. By the way, there's no mention of her riding motorcycles in her bio. The next section is titled Protecting Value. And this is one that we're gonna talk a lot about today. The first bullet is Reduced Gap Between New and Used. This is the one I really wanna get into in a few minutes, and I think it affects all current and prospective buyers. Don't click off just yet. This is the one we really wanna talk about. The second bullet is Q3 dealer inventory down 30 plus percent. As you can see in this next slide, worldwide sales is down 18% year to date from the prior year. Now, if we look at this other slide right here, we'll see that total shipments is down 28.3% versus prior year. Well, if they shipped less motorcycles than what they sold, remember working in negatives here, then that means they sold existing inventory, thus further reducing the inventory on the floor. Now, hopefully everybody's following along because that's gonna be important as we talk about some of this strategy that they're under. The third bullet under protecting value is nearly eliminated promotions and discounts. So you know what this all means, right? There's gonna be no more special year-end pricing to get rid of old models. Not that we have old models at the end of the year because the new models don't come out to Q1 now. Oh, and wait, um, you know, not all models may come out in Q1, but we'll get into that too. Now, the goal was expressed during the call that they were wanna have all bikes selling at or nearly at MSRP to maximize profits. Those are the three things I really wanna talk about but we're gonna run through some more of the highlights real quick. First, they're gonna focus on the 50 highest growth and potential markets. Okay, I get that. Investment and resources aligned with projected market potential. Yeah, that sounds good too. Streamlined product portfolio, 30 plus percent. Well, we all know that they're reducing models and they've already canceled the Bronx. That's just another example of this happening. Deliver the first adventure touring motorcycle, Pan America in 2021. Well, I'm glad to see that happen personally. I think the adventure market is a growing segment and I'm glad to see Harley trying to get into that segment. 
I think there'll be an interesting motorcycle and I think the new design will not break away from the iconic styling that people love and it'll give them a chance to introduce some new technology. Um, but it was mentioned during the call that new products may not release in quarter one. Quarter one launches for existing models primarily and new products may release in different quarters. So don't expect to see that Pan America on a dealership floor near you in quarter one. The last section of this slide talks about parts and accessories and general merchandise. Now they did mention a 15% skew reduction in parts and accessories and that sparked my interest for just a second because one of the things Harley is known for is being highly customizable and now we're talking about reducing the number of accessories that are available. But considering the outstanding aftermarket support from other vendors, I'm really not worried about that at all. And this whole general marketing, focusing on the most profitable SKU, to me that says we want to sell you more hats and t-shirts. Now let's talk about protecting value and what these three bullet points really mean to your everyday customers. First, they say reduce gap between new and used. That doesn't mean lower prices on new bikes, what it actually means is higher prices on used bikes. Now, you could take this two different ways. It's either going to cost you more to buy a Harley used, or you're going to get more trade-in value out of your used Harley, or more cash if you're selling your bike outright. I'm not going to say this is exactly a good or bad thing, because it all just depends on what perspective you're coming from as an existing customer, and whether you're buying, selling, or trading. But, I think there's a purpose behind this, and that's to truly encourage customers to buy new bikes over used bikes because there's not that much difference in price. Now, I think there's some secret sauce in this formula that's going to drive profits at Harley-Davidson, and I'm going to share that with you in just a second. All right, many of us heard that Harley-Davidson dealers were buying up used bikes this summer. The initial thought was just because inventory was down due to the factory being closed and they might have empty space on the floor when people came into shop. But I think there's a little more to that. So if you look at this ad here, this is a current ad running through the end of October on a dealership's website where they're offering 130% of NADA on any used bikes traded in on a new in-stock Harley-Davidson. And one of the key points in the call that was mentioned several times was managing their inventory. We know they shipped less inventory than what they were selling. So that means they're dipping into the existing inventory that was already on the floor to some degree. Now, we all know how supply and demand works. So let's think about this and I want you to check out this slide here. We're gonna look at the other side of this profit equation besides selling motorcycles. Let's look at financing. So if you look at this slide here, You'll see HD financial segment represents about 17% of the company's revenue. Now, if you look at this next slide, if my math is right, and you look at the income, it represents 65% of the operating income from something that's only 17% of the revenue. That says profits to me, baby. I don't know about you, but you know, I heard of a time once a long long time ago where you had to sign up on a waiting list to buy a new harley and used bikes cost almost as much as new bikes do you think we could see that again in the near future well i hope it doesn't get to that point but i do see them driving up the price of used bikes a couple other things that they did and did not touch on in the earnings call was first they're spinning off e-bikes into a new company and that's going to be under a different name, but they are going to say powered by Harley Davidson on the e-bikes. And I'm not just talking about the little e-bikes that uh, they've been selling in the dealership, but actual e-bicycles. Now, they mentioned in the call that they've reduced their global dealer network by 4%. Although I see a new dealership that's getting ready to open up just 60 miles from me. And they should be open any day now. One thing that's kind of surprising is it's only 30 or 40 miles from their sister dealership. I don't know how they got that approved when the company's reducing their dealer network. Oh, and one other important thing to mention, they did not talk about the recent Harley-Davidson Livewire recall. You know, the electric motorcycle from Harley-Davidson, that Livewire. 
All right, I hope you guys liked this video today. And if you dig it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you do that YouTube thing, check out the content on my channel. And if you like it, make sure you subscribe down below. Ring that bell to be notified the next time I drop a new video. And as always, thank you for your support. Stay safe and keep on riding.